Hello. So, this video we're going to be talking about points of interest uh, and specifically discontinuities, types of discontinuities. So, I will do a quick preface by saying that typically speaking, not always, but typically speaking, discontinuity usually represents something that's gone wrong in the uh, model that you're using. So it's usually more of a demonstration of some limitation of a model. There is certain types of discontinuity, specifically usually jump discontinuities, um, which we'll talk about in a second, that will sometimes represent sort of major benchmarks in, in your models as well. So once we go through and sort of have some examples, I'll talk about sort of the contextualized version of these things. Um, but first I'm going to do sort of just a geometric view of these things. So let's say we have some function. Uh, you may remember, perhaps, um, from like Algebra 2 or previous pre-calc class, this idea of continuity, the idea that a function, sort of usually the way it's initially described, is a function is continuous if you can draw the graph without picking up your pen. Um, and so discontinuity is where that feature fails, where you sort of have to pick up the pen in some sense, either literally or sort of metaphorically, to uh, denote some missing piece or some gap in the graph. So I'm going to draw sort of a really awful looking thing here by way of demonstrating our, our three different types of discontinuity. So we can be moving along all nice and continuous. And I'm going to draw an empty circle here. So um, it's a small circle and nothing filled in. And then continue to mosey along. Uh, I'll have another open circle, but straight above it, I'm going to have a closed circle. And then the function sort of goes down really far. And then maybe the function goes like this. OK. And I'm going to label these. So I'm going to have A, B, and this dot, dot, dot that's already here. It's going to be C. OK. So my types of discontinuity, which I've just sort of drawn without actually explaining anything, we have three major types. The first type are what are called holes. So holes, uh, often stated as holes in the graph or, or a hole discontinuity without a W. <laughs> Um, these are places where we have these open circles, but otherwise the graph looks fine. Meaning that if I could sort of fill in that circle, it would be a continuous graph again. As opposed to over here, where if I fill in the circle, I still have to sort of bridge that gap, right? So a whole discontinuity is uh, a missing domain value. Um, or point in an otherwise continuous curve. Now I'll mention um, that we have tools to do this analytically, but again, these are primarily calculus tools um, with the way that our math classes are structured because uh, we need limits. So since we don't have access to limits in this class, uh, this is the sort of definition I'm giving where this is not a, this is a geometric definition, right? Because I'm talking about looking at the curve and sort of understanding what it looks like, right? Um, as opposed to some algebraic or analytic representation. So if, if and when you go to calculus, you get a different definition of what a whole versus uh, the other types of discontinuity are that is analytic in nature. Um, but this is sort of how to think of them from a graph standpoint. Okay. So that's what this one is. If I were to fill in this hole, then this whole segment through that piece would be a nice continuous curve. Right? It would be an otherwise continuous curve through that point if I could fill it in. 
as opposed to down here where if I fill in that empty thing, it's still not continuous because I still have what you could consider a jump here. And in fact, that's exactly what we would call it. So this is a whole discontinuity as opposed to a jump discontinuity. So to be clear, this whole, this is, um, I'll write it over here. This is point A, this thing, right? So this is the discontinuity. For the jump, this is a finite vertical change in uh, the y value. at a point. So this is sort of an unsatisfying oops, unsatisfying um, definition because again, the, what we really want is, is limits. What we really need are limits to do this correctly. But really what I mean when I talk about a jump discontinuity is that sort of as I'm coming from one side and look at it versus coming at it from the other side to look at it, I have to jump from one segment to the other. Right? So I'm jumping from one curve piece to another curve. But that jump from here to here is a finite distance, and that's important, okay? Because whatever this distance is, like I didn't put values, but you know this might be a distance of five or 50 or 5,000, but it's still sort of a, a set number, a finite value, right? To go from here to here. So in particular on our graph, this is point B. And to be clear, I guess I should say a finite, um, non-zero, because I, I wouldn't consider this a, a jump, right? Because I'm not really jumping from one curve to the other, I'm missing a spot, that's why it's a hole, right? Here is a jump because I have to actually go up some amount of distance. Um, so I don't want to consider a, a zero jump as a jump, so I'm gonna say non-zero. Uh, so last but not least, so this is the second type. Uh, the third type is an infinite sometimes referred to as asymptotic discontinuity. And this is when you have a vertical asymptote happening. So you have a, uh, an infinite vertical uh, gap, I guess I'll call it gap. between uh, curves. So here it's a finite vertical gap between curves going from here to here. Here I have an infinite because this one goes down to negative infinity and up to positive infinity. And so the actual vertical gap as they get sort of closer and closer horizontally becomes infinitely large. That's why it's important that this is a finite because that's the sort of difference between the jump and the infinite or asymptotic um, discontinuities. So these are the three types of discontinuity. Now, generally speaking, uh, again, this is sort of very much in general. Uh, there are always exceptions. But in general, what usually happens, whole discontinuity, holes, um, these tend to, so let me maybe write over here, holes are usually errors in the model that aren't in the uh, thing you're modeling, the actual, um, I don't know what you would call it, the actual uh, situation. I'm not sure what I want to call this. Uh, so there, there are errors in the math you're using to describe the situation that you're, that you're solving. So they aren't in the original problem, I guess I'll say. So for example, something about the equations you used to sort of represent this first bit tends to be um, 
some situation, like that the actual equations you use sort of didn't fit the model quite right, didn't actually represent what you were doing quite right, and as a result, you sort of lost a domain piece that you otherwise didn't need to lose. Um, usually you can sort of fill in a hole and, and things are okay. Not always, and that's important, right? You don't want to just willy-nilly you know, fill it in and be like, ah, it's probably fine, because that's how bad things happen. <laughs> but usually that's the case. Now, jump discontinuities. These usually, um, so in fact, let me maybe write this with real grammar. Crazy talk, I know. Um, so these uh, usually represent benchmark achievements. I say achievements, but really achievements or events something in the model. So for example, um, if you're going, you know, going along and then you suddenly jump up, then if this is, for example, uh, how much money you're making, then that would represent a raise, right? A, a major event in your income would be to get a major raise. And so it would, in, it would sort of represent your sort of jump all of a sudden to you know, you don't make slightly more over time, you make suddenly a lot more, you know, in your next paycheck or something. Uh, likewise, if you're sort of um, looking at, say, revenue for a store, right? Maybe your revenue is going along, and then you suddenly open another store, your revenue overall goes up a bunch, right? If you're doing revenue for the company because you now have a second location, you're selling potentially twice as much stuff. That's not to say your profit will jump, right? Because opening another store comes with more costs, but there's a sudden sort of discontinuous spike when you open that new store, suddenly you get a lot more revenue all at once, not gradually increasing, right? You have a grand opening sale or whatever. So these are usually sort of major events happening in the model. Again, exceptions occur. Uh, infinite or asymptotic. Uh, this usually means, so this usually represents what we would call the boundary of the efficacy of the model. So this is sort of a fancy way of saying that this represents where the math no longer represents what you're doing, and really badly so, right? Like, if you're trying to track like your profit over time and you suddenly go down to negative infinity, chances are you're not making negative infinite profit, right? <laughs> like, there is a lower bound somewhere. You might be making negative a lot and you're in a world of hurt, but it's not infinite. Right, so usually an infinite discontinuity means that the math is broken down and something has gone very wrong in your attempt to try to represent the reality of the situation. Um, there is almost nothing in reality that actually carries to an infinite sort of level. Um, there, it, it can get very, very large in some direction. Very rarely does it actually go to some infinite, truly infinite level. Um, one of the sort of really, like a, one of the very few exceptions um, that you could try with this sort of situation would be something like the formation of a singularity for a black hole. Um, the density goes to infinity, and it really does sort of mathematically do that, and it really does sort of represent accurately what's happening in reality. But then again, the formulation for a singularity of a black hole is a very weird event in its own right, which is why it's such a weird math model that you're looking at, okay? So typically, you know, in, in most all applications, um, an infinite discontinuity really represents where the uh, function sort of no longer represents reality and sort of spectacularly so. You don't, you want to sort of stop using the model before you get this sort of asymptotic behavior, so you want to back off a little and stop somewhere for your prior to that. How much prior? Mm, that's not usually clear. That's, 
that's a qualitative question, and it sort of depends on the model. So that's people lock, make a lot of money figuring out exactly how far back to, to cut the model off. Okay. Nonetheless, um, these are the sort of three types of discontinuity and what we're going to be um, you know, using for this class. I will specify again, just to be real clear notation-wise, um, the little open circles are used just to demonstrate that there's a point missing. It's not like you might claim that this isn't a function because the vertical line test hits the circle in two places, but that circle's not actually part of the graph, right? It's just sort of drawing attention to a missing piece of the graph. Likewise, the closed circle is saying that it starts there and moves forward. So here, right, I'm, as I'm moving into the left, I don't exist down here, instead I exist up here. So the actual function value at x equals b is up here, not down there. That's what that means, okay? So that, those are our types of discontinuity. All right.